What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Montana State Bobcat Dynasty on NCAA Football 06. Today we've got a recruit visiting tackle Shannon McBride and uh, hopefully we can get him to commit and hopefully we can have a big win in today's game against Portland State. They are led by an impact quarterback, Rick Boyd, but he's not playing quite like an impact player with 7 touchdowns and 12 picks. Barry is their leading rusher with over 600 yards and a couple of rushing touchdowns. Pettit is their leading wide receiver with over 500 yards and three receiving touchdowns there. And the offensive line may be the lone bright spot on this team. Their defense is okay. They uh, don't really have anyone who's racking up sacks though. Although Jenkins does have three picks on the season, Cole has himself two. They are 1-6 on the season, they have not won a game inside of the conference yet, and they are ranked 116 out of 119 in the nation, so I think it's pretty safe to say that the Vikings are having a pretty down year. Meanwhile, Montana State is still on top of the Big Sky Conference, and we're looking to continue our undefeated streak in the Big Sky Conference now. Not the best start for us as the kick is going to sail out of bounds, giving Portland State some pretty solid field position to start off the game, and then they're going to pick up 15 yards on first down. Boyd looking to throw for the first time today, but he's going to get brought down for the sack by William Jackson. On second and long, Boyd's going to throw over the middle to Johnson, who's going to pick up that lost yardage, making it third and nine. Boyd looking to throw again. He's going to step up into the pocket right into a sack. It's Mario Harris getting another one there. Having a pretty underrated season, I would say. That's going to force fourth down and 11 and a Portland State punt. Montana State on offense now for the first time today. It's Brandon Adriano right up the middle, picking up about 13 yards. Adriano is going to get another carry, bringing that one out to the right side. And that's going to pick up about 8 yards. 21 carries for him already. Here's a third straight carry. He runs a defender over, gets the edge on the left side across midfield before he gets drugged down at the 45. Now we're going to fake giving it to him. Stevens looking to air it out for the first time today. Takes a shot downfield, but the pass sails out of bounds intended for Lester. Second and 10. Here's Brandon Adriano running this one to the right side. Made a defender mess before he gets smacked. Loses the football. Luckily, Ryan is there for the fumble recovery. That's going to set up third and one, and we're not going to be able to get it. Stevens tried running it there, and he had no time to try to pitch that one out to Brandon Adriano. That's going to make it fourth down. The offense staying on the field for MSU. Stevens flushed to his right. Now he's going to throw off his back foot, and the pass falls incomplete intended for Curtis Brown, and that is going to be a turnover on downs. In the flat now, it's Barry picking up the first down before he gets pushed out of bounds. A fresh set of downs now. Barry's going to get the carry, taking it right up the middle and picking up about three or four yards. Second down and six are going to come out in the offset eye formation. And William Jackson gets his second sack of the quarter there, forcing third down and 11. Once again, it's going to be offset eye formation. Boyd looking to throw. He's got time in the pocket. He's going to take a shot to the end zone, and the pass is going to be dropped. And that's how you become a 1-6 team. You don't capitalize on opportunities like that. That should have been a touchdown there. He beat two of our guys there. It was right in the bread basket. But instead, it's going to be a punt by Portland State. A nice run by Brandon Adriano. Tack on the five-yard face mask, and it's an automatic first down. At the beginning of the second quarter now, Michael Ryan makes his presence felt as he picks up a gain of six there. Stevens looking to throw yet again, moving to his left, and that pass was nearly intercepted. A dangerous throw. Third and four now, Stevens rolling to his right. He can run for it, but instead he's going to throw it at the last second. Just a flick of the wrist out there to Larry Lane gets us into Portland State territory. Stevens dropping back to pass. He's going to take a shot over the middle looking for Gerard Doolin who can't haul that one in. On second down, Adriano's going to take this one right up the gut and that's going to pick up the first down. Over 800 yards rushing for him on the season so far. Spinning off of one tackle is Adriano but he still gets brought down in the backfield for a loss of four. Looking to throw now over the middle, it's Gerard Doolin inside of the 15, now getting us inside of the red zone. Let's take a second look at this one, he's able to haul that one in. He makes a nice catch and he's done a pretty good job at holding onto the football through big hits this season. Stevens looks to pass on first down, but instead he gets brought down in the backfield for a loss of 12. 
A floater to the left side now looking for Doolin, but it's going to be broken up. Third and 22 now. Stevens looking to throw. He's going to go over the middle for Gerard Doolin, who gets brought down at about the two-yard line. Another great catch made by the slot receiver. First and goal. Now we're going to give it to Adriano. Nope, it's actually going to be a play fake, and the pass to the end zone is going to get broken up. Second and goal. Now we're going to give it to Adriano, who bounces it to the outside and brings it in for the Bobcat touchdown. Just a one-yard run, and it's going to be finally some points on the board for some team after a scoreless first quarter. Jason McMillan out to kick this one off. Let's make sure this one stays in bounds, and indeed it does. That's a, that's a pretty good start to this next drive here. They're going to return this one is Pruitt, and, or Pettit rather. He doesn't get a great return, and Jesse Lester got hurt there uh, as he got taken down by one of the blockers, and that, it's actually going to be a pretty big injury for him. It's going to knock him out for the rest of the season, in fact, which isn't too big of an injury, although he is our number four wide receiver, so he does get a little bit of playing time which means Martin Anderson is going to get some more playing time at that wide receiver four spot. Pettit makes that catch on the left side, and that's going to pick up a nice play for them. Probably their best play of the game so far. Less than two minutes left to go in the half, and they're going to run the ball and be limited to just two yards. Rick Boyd looking to throw. He steps up into the pocket, and it's going to be intercepted by Thomas Spicer, stiff-arming a couple of offensive linemen before he steps out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Injuring one of them as he did that. And the quarterback just did not see Spicer there at all. He threw that directly to him. Here's Larry Stevens running this one inside of the 30. Inside of the 20-yard line. Tries to make a move on a defender and gets brought down at the 6. Larry Stevens has been a big-time dual threat for Montana State this season. Over 400 yards rushing. That's going to get us down to the 6-yard line now. It's going to be a goal-to-go situation for Stevens, who's rolling to his right. He's going to throw out the last second, looking for Chris Bonner, who's lined up at wide out with the injury to our other wide receiver, Jesse Lester. There is a penalty on the defense there, encroachment. That's going to put us out to the 3-yard line. And then we're going to run it with Brandon Adriano, getting his second touchdown of the day so far. The first one was from 1 yard out, this one from 3 yards out. That's going to put us up by 14. Just about a minute left to go in this second quarter, and Portland State still has yet to get on the board. Perkins on the right side picks up about three yards there. Second down and seven, they come out in some offset eye formation. They're going to run the football. He gets rocked by Marquez Randolph, who forces the fumble. Portland State jumps on top of it, but we are going to burn a timeout. Barry's going to run the football right up the gut, and he's not going very far. And MSU's going to burn another timeout. And we're going to start off this next drive at the 38-yard line. Martin Anderson makes the catch over the middle and picks up about a gain of three. And we're going to have to burn our last timeout. Taking a shot to the end zone on second down now. And the pass is going to get broken up there intended for Larry Lane. A bit too long for a field goal, so we're just going to take another shot to the end zone to end the quarter. And it's going to fall incomplete looking for Curtis Brown. That will send us to halftime, though, where we lead by 14. MSU is also going to get the football to start off the second half now. Brandon H. Randall is going to start off by stiff-arming a defender and picking up a gain of 9. Second and inches, Stevens is looking to throw, rolling to his right. He just might run for this one. Indeed, he will. Getting the edge onto the fender who finally catches him from behind. That's going to put us over 100 rushing yards as a team so far today. Stevens is going to take a shot deep on this next play, but that's going to be way, way over the head of Gerard Doolin. Here's a direct snap now to the running back, Gage Rano, who takes this one to the left side, tries to make a move. It doesn't really work, but still gets out to about the 25-yard line. 88 yards rushing so far for Adriano, who is going to get a little bit of a breather on this play. We're going to give it to Brown, who takes it right up the gut, gets smacked, but does pick up the first down. Stevens moving to his left. Is he going to run for it? No, not really. He thought about throwing it at the last second. Instead, he just trucked a defender and picked up a yard. Stevens is going to take a shot to the end zone here. He floated to the corner. Touchdown, Larry Lane, the freshman wide receiver. He's been a little bit underwhelming this season. But there he makes a nice touchdown reception, putting us up 21 to nothing. 
Boyd's going to take a shot on this next play as they need some chunk plays, really, if they want to get back into this game. But that one's going to be overthrown and incomplete. A quick throw there is going to get broken up, nearly picked off. Third and ten now, trying to avoid to go, th trying to avoid going three and out. Boyd takes a shot deep here, but Brock Eugene on in the coverage there makes a nice play and breaks that one up. And they are going to punt for it. They did not go for it. I thought they might, considering just the way this game has been going. But instead, they give us the football back, and Brandon Adriano breaks off that run for over 20 yards. He's going to get the carry on the draw now, and he's not really going to go anywhere there. On second down, Stevens is looking to throw now. Larry Stevens to the left side. He's got an open running lane. He's going to take it. The first down and more stepping out of bounds inside of the 10. Setting up, setting up a goal-to-go situation now. Larry Stevens just showing off how good he is, how mobile, we, how mobile he is. The best mobile quarterback we've had since Troy Anderson. First down and goal going to the end zone. We had a man wide open. It was Larry Lane. Could have had his second touchdown today. But that's where Stevens needs to work. In the accuracy department, he has not been the most accurate quarterback in the world. In fact, his accuracy on the season is under 50%. And as you see there today, he's only 6 of 18. Make that 6 of 19 after that pass is just off the mark. He had Ryan open, but just overthrew him. We are in field goal range, though, for Jason McMillan. The kick is up. It is good. That will still keep it a three-score game, but they're going to have to score three touchdowns, all with two-point conversions along with them. They're faced with an early third down on this next drive. Boyd looking to throw. He's got a man open. He's got Chambers, and that, and that is the first third down conversion on the day for the Vikings. Boyd looking to throw here. He's going to try to run for it instead, but Marquez Randolph is there for his fifth tackle of the game. A nice tackle for loss there. Boyd throwing to the left side there, but the pass is going to be overthrown. Now on third and long, Rick Boyd looking to throw, but instead he's going to get brought down by Pat Hadley, the freshman defensive end. And Portland State is going to punt the football, and that kind of tells me they've basically given up on today's game. Adriano makes a nice catch in the flat there. It's going to make it third down and short. We bring in Brian Brown, the power back, and he's going to pick up the first down and keep this drive alive for Montana State. Five wide now. Open was Brandon Adriano, and the pass was just off the mark. It's those little things that Larry Stevens has been struggling with. That was one of his uh, flaws coming out of high school was just his accuracy just wasn't there, and you're really seeing it show in these last few games. Hopefully that's something that we can improve on in the offseason. We got a big catch there from Brandon Adriano. That puts us out inside of the uh, the red zone now. Now a floater to the end zone. It's going to be caught. It's Curtis Brown. Touchdown, Montana State. Brown with his first catch of the ball game. It's a 17-yard touchdown. And that's just going to extend our lead and pat the stats a little bit more. Another touchdown for the freshman to freshman. Portland State, you know, they might as well still try here. A little bit of a weird play is it's going to get flipped out to Callahan, and the fullback doesn't really pick up a whole lot. On third down, they're going to run the football here with Barry, and they can't even pick that up. Man, it's just been a tough day for Portland State. We put the backups in on offense, and they don't do a whole lot. So, you know, the backups are back in on defense here. This pass is going to get tipped, and then it's going to get caught. Chambers all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Portland State. They avoid getting shut out in the last minute of the game here. Kind of just unlucky by the backups. Chris Bonner with the pass breakup, but it gets tipped right into the hands of the receiver. So, unable to pitch a, shut a shutout. But still, a great game by Montana State, just dominating as we should. I mean, we're the best team in the conference. They are the worst team in the conference. That game basically went as expected. I was hoping that Larry Stevens was going to play a little bit better. He kind of feels like he's been a little bit disappointing recently. Just, you know, with his great start to the season, especially those first two games. He had, uh, I think, like eight touchdowns total in those two games. It's been a little bit disappointing ever since, especially in the completion percentage department. Just 37% today. That has got to get better. Over 100 yards rushing for Brandon Age Riano. He had two rushing touchdowns as well. And then, of course, Larry Stevens, always a great threat in the running game. Gerard Doolin had 74 yards receiving today. Uh, but once again, if you've got a bad completion percentage and not very many yards, your receivers aren't going to be putting up big numbers either. 
and then this defense played great. The starters gave up a grand total of zero points. They got four sacks and an interception there. And with that great play today, we got Shannon McBride to commit. So now we got two tackles committed to our team. Hopefully our offensive line can get better now, and hopefully that means Stevens has more time to throw, and hopefully that can help the completion percentage. Looking at some other Big Sky games this week, as you saw there, Idaho got the win over Northern Arizona. Sacramento State wins by 10 over Temple. You got Montana putting up 41 points on Idaho State as the Grizzlies advance to 4-4. Four and four. And then lastly, you have Eastern Washington defeating Weber State 21-17. Well, that's going to wrap up this video now. Thank you all for watching. That would be very much appreciated if you left a like on the video and if you subscribed if you're not already. But until next time, this has been Jeffrey reminding you to stay moist.